Hello and welcome to another episode of Ferris Sports Update. I'm your host, Rob Bentley, and thanks for tuning in. On today's show, we'll update you on the anchor bone victory for the Ferris State football team. We'll meet with the new athletic director here at Ferris State University, Steve Brocklebank, and we'll check in with Bulldog soccer after a couple big wins. We'll start first, though, with Bulldog football, joined by head coach Tony Anise. Coach, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Rob. Obviously an exciting game uh, this past Saturday night. Great atmosphere at Lubber Stadium, and fortunately your team uh, gets a big victory here on the road. Yeah, it was quite an environment. Uh, they brought it, man. I tell you, their students brought it. Uh, you know, Fair State fans brought it too. It was just an incredible environment, and uh, obviously a huge win for you know a lot of different reasons. Um, obviously, that puts us uh, you know in, in a situation where we still are undefeated in, in the GLIAC play, um, and and then obviously regional rankings and uh, those kind of things are really important. So. Very pleased to, to have that W the other night. You know, uh, both teams coming in were 5-0 and on the year, and certainly they had been playing some excellent football. Yeah, and they, they, I thought they played very well on Saturday. Obviously, you know, they're, they're going to kick themselves over a couple uh, mistakes in the red zone, but it's, it's just football, you know. Uh, it's funny, they're making a big deal out of the 99-yard scoop and score, but that was with less than a minute to go in, in the second quarter, and... In 19, they had a scoop and score against us, went, went 90 yards with less than uh, one minute to go in the, in the second quarter. So uh, to put, you know, put uh, each of the respective teams up, you know, basically two, two scores. So very similar circumstances, but our guys, uh, our guys did a nice job. You know, some of the highlights, uh, obviously uh, early on, uh, the crowd certainly a factor. It was, it was a loud place, uh, I know, for your offensive unit. Wow, right? Um, really... Uh, we got backed up in front of the student section, and I think we got like 12 penalties in a row or something insane, you know, legal procedures. But we, we had to do some uh, changing on the, on the, on the move, uh, just trying to get uh, a snap count uh, successful and things of that sort. Here an interception early on from Alex Thomas and uh, named the GLIAC uh, Defensive Player of the Week and certainly had a big ball game for he you. He had a big ball game, yeah. Great to see him have a great uh, ball game. and. And he made uh, you know some real key plays for us. Here, a big pump from Cy Barnett uh, returned to the field here uh, for the first time in a few weeks. Named the GLIAC Special Teams Player of the Week and did a nice job of flipping the field right here. Yeah, he uh, he you know back kicking extra points and and field goals. Although we faked the field goal, we had an opportunity to, to kick, uh, but he also did a nice job in the punt game too. Grand Valley gets the early score, but uh, we'll see your team. Uh, come right back, uh, Jared Bernhardt uh, back in the lineup and named the GLIAC Offensive Player of the Week and had a big ball game. Yeah, you know, you bring pressure on Jared, uh, it's risk reward. There's a lot of open space for him and, and people don't realize this, but uh, um, you know, he, he's completing 80% of his passes. So that's eight out of 10. So, uh, you know, you, you, you better trust that he, he can throw the ball successfully as well. Obviously Grand Valley moved the ball some, but your defense uh, forced three turnovers, came up with a big interception right here at the goal line. Yeah, Caleb Smith, great, great play by him. And uh, you know, obviously those are big key uh, momentum uh, changers. So Reson Thompson with the first touchdown reception here, another big one from Xavier Wade right in the end zone. Yeah, we named Xavier our uh, Offensive Player of the Week because he just catches the ball. Uh, we throw it up to him, he catches the ball, so he's an amazing receiver. Here the corner fooled, uh, fooled us a little bit, squatted in, into the flat and made a great play, and this is a play where the ball squirts out there. Um, contrary to popular belief, it's very, very uh, clear to see he did not cross the goal. And, uh, you know, here they actually had a player that, that uh, tried to draw a penalty, and he did draw a flag, but uh, one of the line judges saw it. But it's very smart play by their player, very smart. Uh, I used it as an example with our guys to, you know, try, try to be uh, intelligent in the game of football. Obviously, you got that score right before halftime, then you come back. Uh, Jared keeps this play uh, alive right here to C.J. Jefferson and sets up an early second half score. Yeah, just wow, right? I mean, what, what kind of play is that? I saw somebody on Twitter caught that. I think Harrison said something about it, and it's just a wow, uh, wow play. How important was this uh, score right here to make it 28-7 to early on in the third quarter? It was, it was great, you know, and give them credit. They came back and, and, and put two drives together. Here we blow a coverage, and and uh, they score a touchdown and, and, and they close it to 28-21 game. So give them credit, uh, you know, they kept on fighting. Here, I uh, know a punt you'd like to have back, uh, but obviously uh, you come up with a big uh, special teams play uh, here shortly after this Grand Valley State touchdown. Yeah, you know, it, uh, you know, they get, it, 
28-21, they fake the punt here. We get caught a little bit off guard, which we kind of screwed that up. That was a coaching mistake. And then uh, and they, again, have to punt it. And then we go with the fake field goal here. Um, and uh, we probably won't run that ever again. So we call that Bab Bab for Bab Ford because we used to call it for Wyatt Ford. So it was Bab Bab. And, and we executed that play perfectly. I thought they defended it really well, but we executed it perfectly. Got the touchdown to push it back to two scores. As uh, Grand Valley will get uh, the score here uh, coming up shortly uh, in the end zone uh, to cut it back to, to one. But uh, fortunately, you were able to cover the onside kick. Yeah, on this onside kick, Caleb uh, let it go and blocked. And I'll tell you what, Brandon Childress and Xavier Wade like just sold out. You could see them just like high point that ball and, and, and trying to keep their hands on it. The ball kept on moving and, and we recovered the fumble or the, the onside kick. 35-28, the final score. Uh, I know, uh, obviously, that meant a lot in terms of the conference race, the the playoff seeding. How important is that for the for the fans? I know, and the alums on both sides. Well, I don't know if I can answer that question. Only just, I guess, from uh, the the text messages and things like that, I, I get, and people are just so thrilled. You know, we're always thrilled to to beat uh, Grand Valley because, I mean, it, people want to say rivalry. Yes, very good football team, though, and that's. You know, that's what I think is, is most evident as far as how important it is. is we, we beat a really good team, um, and it puts us in the driver's seat a little bit on some things uh, from a regional perspective and things of that sort. So um, on to Tech, though. Obviously, Michigan Tech, long road trip this weekend. Uh, not only have to take uh, the long road trip, but a, a good opponent coming up. Uh, yeah, so Saturday. they're they're tied with us in first place right now. We're both 3-0 and in, in GLIAC play. Their loss to Grand Valley in week four was a non-league game, and so, um, and, and they won three in a row, uh, three conference games in a row, obviously, and they beat Northern Michigan uh, in the wire last week. They, they uh, beat uh, Wayne State down at Wayne State, and then uh, they beat Davenport at home. So uh, they're doing a really nice job playing. They're number one defense, uh, scoring defense in, in the conference right now, so they're really holding people down. Obviously, coming into a game after a big win like that, how do you keep the, the guys focused, uh, ready to go on Saturday afternoon? We're dogs, so uh, that's who we are. You know, we, we put it behind us, um, and uh, we're, we're focused on the next opponent. You know, we've been able to do that. I mean, you know all the numbers as far as consecutive road victories and, and consecutive wins and all those things. I kind of lose track of them, but we're dogs, so that's what we do. We, we bring it uh, – every week and uh, I'm excited to get up there this weekend and and play great against the Huskies. Well coach thanks uh, for the time uh, congratulations on the win best of luck and safe travels up to Houghton this uh, coming week. Thanks Rob I appreciate it. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports update right after this.